All right, this brings us to our sling loading portion as far as we're going to physically demonstrate it for you and show you some numbers that these load cells are putting out. So step one, before you lift any load, you've got to know the weight of the load. The weight of this load is approximately 120 pounds, give or take a pound. All right, the second thing you've got to know is location of center of gravity. Now, why do you have to know the location of center of gravity is because that's going to affect your vertical shares. Now, my center of gravity is equal distance from here to here as it is from here to here. So my distances are equal, thus my vertical shares will be equal. Now, in this case, I've got a two-leg bridle lifting the load, so I've got two pick points. The weight of the load is 120 pounds, thus my vertical share would be 60 pounds. All right, if I had a protractor, I could measure this distance, this angle right here to be 60 degrees. Now the load angle factor associated with 60 degrees is 1.155, or we could say 1.2. So it's a 20% increase from my vertical share. My vertical share was 60 pounds, 20% of 60 is 12. If I add that back to 60, that would be a 72 pound tension, predicted tension. Now, here's my meter showing that I'm a couple of pounds off, probably because I'm not exactly at 60 degrees. All right, with that, now I'm going to set the load back down. I'm going to move these legs out, thus changing this angle. And when I change the angle, it's going to have an effect on that tension. Let's see what happens. All right, so I have not changed the length of the slings. I've just reconnected them farther apart so the legs are farther apart, which in effect changes the angle. So if I pick it up now at this new angle, if I measure this angle, I will find that it's approximately a 45 degree angle. All right? We're going to see an increase of the multiplier is 1.414. So a a 50%, we're going to say just say 50 to make the math easy. So 60 pounds, which is my vertical, a 50% increase would be 30 pounds on top of that 60, which would be about a 90. So we'll see what those load cells are reading. Now, we're not exactly at 45 degrees. We're a little bit less than that, thus I'll be a little bit above 90, 90, 92, something like that. All right, now I've moved my pick points, my connection points out as far as I can possibly connect them on this particular load. And I'm down to a sling angle of 30 degrees. Um, the angle of loading then my multiplier is two, two times vertical share. My load has not changed, therefore my vertical is still gonna be 60. Multiplied times two is 120 pounds. So I'm gonna pick this thing up off the ground. And then we're going to look at our meters to see how close we are. There again, we're a little bit above 120, probably because I'm a little bit lower than 30. Now, with that being said, I am going to drop this down, still connected out at the end. I'm going to pull this lock pin out, lengthen the sling legs, and this is the beauty of a chain eliminator. Now in effect here, I've gone back to a 60 degree angle of loading. So my angle of loading multiplier then is going to be about 20% or 1.2. So my vertical here is 100, uh, uh, 60 pounds, multiplied a 20% increase is about 12 to 14, depending on exact angles and lengths and we're gonna be looking at about a 72, 74, 76 pounds of tension. Now, why did we go through this drill? We went through this because it is very common for people in the field to change angles and not consider capacity. So we wanna stay within the capacity of the sling regardless of that angle of loading. Thanks for watching this demo. To learn more about the RigSafe RigSmart truck and trailer, visit rigcrosby.com.
Also, be sure to check out our online rigging course and other training opportunities at thecrosbygroup.com. Thank you.